Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the Bean Dip Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me. We're at it again. Um, you know, I needed a little break last week. A lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, but we're back day before the show. Um, you guys already know I've been I've been trying to promote this every show. Every show I always promote all month long, right? I usually get the dates about three weeks to a month ahead of time, and I am just promoting nonstop through word of mouth to the homies to to the customers that I get drunk at the bar. I don't get drunk, but I get them drunk, right? I'm the bartender, you know. Um, yeah, just <clears throat> whatever I can do, and you know, even right here, I'm always letting you guys know what where my shows are at, what's going on, and, you know, I'm just here to tell you again, tomorrow night, 8 p.m., 8 p.m. at Rudy's LA in East LA, if you don't know where, you better fucking find out, all right, it's, it's not that hard, it's down the street from ELAC, or you can Google it, it's 2023, people, come on, fucking Google shit, Rudy's LA, Los Angeles, you will see it. 8 p.m., dude. We got a we got a dope lineup, a very fun lineup. Um, you know, a bunch of dudes that I'm looking forward, you know, to actually seeing perform. Uh, you know, we got Mario Rodriguez. Uh, dude's really fun. Love his energy. We got a a new comedian who's been trying to like work his way. You know, trying to get it consistent. Big beefy, Jerry Aquino. She's She's big in the roast battle world, you know, she's doing her thing. One of my good friends, Greg Buckman, super dope. Um, I may I may mess up her last name, okay? Now I feel like a white guy when, when they're trying to say my last name. She's Chinese. I don't know if it's Olivia Zing or Olivia Ching. Zing... I don't know. Zing sounds fake. Ching sounds racist. I don't know. I'm going to ask her how to say it when the day comes. Uh. Um, she's really awesome. I did a roast battle with her at the comedy store. Um, and we're going to be having uh, Ernesto Ledesma headline. Dude is all over the place. I think he's touring right now. Um, another guy with uh, high energy. and you know, It's just going to be fun. It's going to be a fun time. This is going to be like the fourth installment of the Last Resort comedy show. And I'm just, you know, it's it's very cool that it's it's gotten this far. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? Like producing a show and, and you know, it seemed a lot more um, or a lot less supportive, you know, than, than I would have imagined because... I've been to a bunch of a bunch of uh, you know comedic produced shows or comp comedian produced shows, you know, and and usually they're they're small, man. You know what I mean? They're small group. Usually the the audience size is about ten to fifteen, if that. You know what I mean? And I've been fortunate enough to to bring like a a big audience. Um, to my stage, which is great, you know, and, and I, I tell everybody, you know, because, you know, I, I'm sure I could have produced a show in Hollywood, you know, I'm sure I can go over there and produce a show, but no one's going to come out, bro. You know, no one's going to go. And, you know, I'm sacrificing so much of my life, you know, to be able to do this, that I also need help financially, Right. And, you know, I need, I, the, the show not only helps me practice um, my material, my, my stage presence, allows me to network with other comedians and, you know, hopefully we, you know, they put me on their shows, but, you know, it helps me out a little bit, you know, puts a little bit of a change in my pocket, you know what I mean? It's, it's not the, the most fucking financially successful show you know it's growing you know what I mean and I love the growth process you know what I mean and I love I love seeing the community on my side of town see the growth you know what I mean? and this is really what I wanted you know what I mean like on this side there's there's not a lot going on there's dudes who are 
running shows around the city, like a couple. But if, how are you going to get on those shows if there's nowhere for you to practice? Right? How are you going to hit up uh, Narciso's show at Lito's Cork Room if you, you know, you have, you've never practiced comedy and the only way you could practice comedy is traveling 40 minutes to an hour to Hollywood, right? Or say, for instance, I think the closest mics to here are either in um, Covina, which isn't that far. I mean, it's a 20-minute drive, 25-minute. And then there's Bowflower, same thing, 20 minutes. And I just wanted to bring that for this area. You know what I mean? It's East LA is such a like a central point for all these little other like sub cities in Los Angeles that you know I want to I want to create it and I'm sure I've said this before on um on other podcasts but I want to build a community here. You know what I mean? I want I want people and also, it helps me out in that way, too. I don't have to travel an hour away just to do five minutes, right? Now I am traveling 10 to 15 minutes, and I do 10 minutes, right? Because it's my mic. I could do whatever I want. And most of the time, I'm giving comedians 10 minutes, right? If, uh, if there's less than 10 comics that show up, everybody gets 10 minutes, you know, if it gets past 10, then, it, you know, the time goes anywhere from five to eight minutes. And it's just a total benefit for me, you know, and it helps me get better, you know, keeps me doing comedy. And I, it also, you know, I think it does something for a community like East L.A. or, or you know, Bell Gardens or uh, Whittier, Pico Rivera, right? Because all these people... You know, they're, th- these are like neighboring cities. So I think it's just nice to be able to, to have that. And look, it's not like, it's not like all, there's like other mics that are completely out of hand. There's mics in downtown LA. There's mics in Pasadena. You know, I just thought like for, for the cities that I've lived in and been around in, there's nothing like a comedy open mic anywhere, Right. And I want to give people something where they can feel like, hey, I can just go do comedy. I don't always just have to get drunk or fucking, you know, commit crime or fucking go to college. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Is I, I it's 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 a little bit of both. It's it's you know selfishly, it's fifty. It's got to be. It's got to be fifty fifty. Maybe 60, 40. I don't know the exact percentage, but it's helping me out as much as anybody else. You know, I'm, it's at a location that, um, you know, historically has been around forever in East L.A. If you go anywhere in East L.A., okay, let's not, let's not say anywhere, but a large portion of East L.A. knows who Rudy is. Rudy, the owner of Rudy's L.A., everybody knows who he is. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, it's a... It's a slow spot, you know, not a lot of business running through throughout throughout the week. They'll have events, you know, but that's like once a month or once every two weeks. So, I mean, that's not consistent. And what I do, I bring the open mic on a Monday, right? Slowest day out of the week, you know, and hey, it provides entertainment for the local bar flies that are there, there. And it brings more business. So it's a win-win. I don't ask for money for the mic. For the book show, it's a total different thing, right? I, I'm actually inviting audience members. Um, I still don't get paid, but I, I get mon- uh, ticket money. So like I said, it helps me out as much as it helps anybody else out. Um, So please, you know, if you guys love this podcast if you guys love me or if you hate me if you want to see me fail come in come and see the show because it's possible i could very much likely fail maybe not fail but it could be a bad show i might have everybody else will kill the comedians will kill i will bomb you know and you'll be like yes 
is what I came for. And fuck this guy. You know, he's... Hey, I paid 15 bucks to watch him bomb. It was worth it. You know? So please, if you guys listen to this, if you guys follow me, come to the show, man. It's 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 a good-ass time. Super fun. You know, there's there's tickets online. I always put the, the link for tickets in the description um, that are that go for ten dollars. If you wait until you buy tickets at the door, then it's fifteen. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's gonna be a fun fucking show. You know, the audiences have been super supportive. Every show, they're always so good. Yeah, and I want to thank everybody who's been coming too. Um, one of the cool things actually is uh. What, this dude I used to go to college with, um, I don't know if it was at ELAC or Cal State LA. I think it was Cal State LA. Um, we're both journalism majors. Um, and he hit me up, you know, because I, you know, I'm still in contact with those, 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 ma- those students. And we're all in a group chat and I'll send them messages. Um, and I sent one out and homeboy uh, replied and he's like, Hey, I want to go. I think it would be a really cool feature story if I could, you know, interview you and, you know, and all that. And I was like, yeah, dude, of course, that'd be amazing. I've, I've done the same thing when I was, um, when I was, uh, in journalism, um, for this at Cal State LA. Uh, I was doing a story on these dudes. They were podcasters. Fuck, I'm going to have to remember their fucking name. The Br- Little Brown Boys. I think it's called Little Brown Boys. You guys could check them out on Instagram. I, I, they're on YouTube, but I'm just saying to follow them. Let me see. Let me just make sure that name is correct. Yeah, the Little Brown Boys. The Ally Al Brown Boys. And they're a fun podcast, dude. Latinos, I think they're based in, fuck, I, th- I think they're based in Paramount. I'm I'm not too sure. Um, I I went to their the recording room one time when they had an episode, and dude, they're they're just a fun podcast. You know what I mean? They're they're joking around constantly. Um, yeah, if you guys want to check them out, let me see. I wrote a story about them before. It's probably in. The Cal State LA, um, like, news database kind of stuff. You could find it. Let me see. What's up? What are their names? Uh, I guess it doesn't say their names. One of the dudes' name is Frankie. I don't know the other dude, but... Um, yeah, it's this, basically what I'm saying. It's, it's uh, not a new thing, you know. And it, I think it's dope. You know what I mean? It, it helps, you know... I always felt that when it came to the Latino community, you know, we were always in the dark. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knows about white people and what they do. Everybody knows about black people and what they do. Dude, even now, everybody knows about Asians and what they do. Latinos, what do they know? We listen to mariachi and we eat tacos. I'm so happy for shows like... Um, fucking uh, this fool. I think that's what it's called. I'm all I'm fucking all off today, guys. I don't know what the hell is going on, but it's called this fool on Hulu. I believe so. This fool, this fool. Let me see. Is it this fool? Yeah, this fool. That's just a funny thing to say. You know, growing up, like, whenever somebody would say something stupid, you would be like, this fool, you know what I mean? So, I just like all this, like, shit that's been coming out. You know, Foo's Gone Wild has been out forever and super successful page. I love that page. Um, So, I just like it, you know what I mean? And I was super down for the reporter. I don't want to give his name. I don't know if that's a a thing to do or if it's a no-no. Um, maybe I could talk about it um, the week after, you know? Um, so, 
He's gonna come. I'm assuming he's gonna record. Maybe not the whole show. I don't. I don't necessarily know what he's gonna do, but yeah, he'll probably put on the show. Maybe have an interview after, before. Not too sure what's gonna happen. Pictures. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be really cool. Um, I'm really excited, and uh, you know, you just gotta keep on busting it. You know, stay humble, have fun, work hard, all that fucking boyish. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, dude. Um, I know last week I wanted to talk about it, but I wasn't able to do the episode. But I had, I was wondering, you know, about the episode prior. Did did YouTube censor me? Not in the sense where they like, you know, dropped the episode or or they flagged me or something like that. But I just thought it was so strange. Look, I'm I'm a loser, dude. I'm a super loser. All I do is look at the views <laughs> all day, all night. And you know, the last episode I did um was called it was ba- it was it was about the the Lahaina fires in Maui, and you know I, I did a whole episode on that, and basically the views barely even moved for like that whole week. It, they were at six views only up until a couple days ago. It went up three views. And I thought it was strange because, you know, I looked back, I was like, when is the last time I actually had less than 10 views? And six months ago was the last time I had nine views. Six months ago. So it just seemed very strange to me. I'm sure YouTube's not just out here listening to my podcast. I thought possibly it could be the title. I know that's a big one because... The title is Lahaina is getting fucked. However, I censored fucked. It's F and then like that star, you know, on the the receiver button, the the dial button. It's like F star 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 D. I mean, sure, maybe, but is that why you censor a fucking episode? I don't know. Who knows? I also thought like you know, deeper conspiracy, who knows, like, you know, about like, uh, I don't want to get back into the the same thing. I'm just wondering why it was limited, you know? I could be making shit up. I have no idea. But I'm telling you, it was just strange. It was super strange. Like whenever, whenever other episodes probably didn't do well, it... It didn't occur to me or didn't make me think anything, right? It was just like, okay, that just, who knows, whatever. But this one, I don't know. It just seems so weird. It it was during the time when all this is happening. Obviously, everybody's um, thinking that um, the the government is fucking over the, the people of Lahaina. So, you know, I'm just tripping. I'm like, YouTube? Are you, are you fucking already tripping on me and I'm I'm nobody highest view the highest view I've ever had on these YouTube videos I've been making is 85 dude how are you gonna fuck with the dude with 85 views bro that's that's like that's <laughs> 85 people I mean come on some people probably just clicked on it and then dipped you know what I mean like <laughs> Don't censor the little dogs. You know what I mean? The underdogs. We're we're trying our best, right? I I feel very p- proud about those 85 views, right? And then you want to be like, "You know what? This guy is talking about Lahaina. He's he's getting dangerous. Let's let's not fucking put out his video in the algorithm." You know, it's uh that that title's a little bit uh questionable controversial you know and i don't know man look deep down deep down i guess i am a conspiracy head you know what i mean i think everybody's head goes immediately to conspiracy whenever something happens right 
until you start like questioning the conspiracy that you're coming and then you're like okay yeah it could be this da 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 you know like i've tried doing that with this video i was like all right look i get it maybe the the title is a little bit intense right lahaina is getting fucked right it's youtube bro i mean come on bro this is not fucking is the is what's that what's that fucking organization the fcc dude is the fcc involved with youtube like what what does what stake does youtube hold in censoring people there is literally millions of people on this planet that have or watch youtube the i i just don't understand the need for censoring that i mean i get it like here's the thing maybe when it comes to, i guess racist stuff but then who, who's to say that like you can't be racist you know it's not good to be racist you know what i mean like i'm there are like subjects out there that probably shouldn't be maybe used as entertainment or let's say promote, right? You're not going to go out there and promote child sex trafficking, right? You're not going to go out there and promote slavery or, or fucking bombing helpless villages, right? Like that stuff is going to come off as like, intense right it's going to be like not enjoyable to hear nobody wants to hear about somebody else or other people being taken advantage of or even murdered right that's just that's just not the best content you know um but i just feel like for what youtube is hey bro, I got, sorry guys someone's sending me a book Got the show booked and hope to do more. I'll definitely have you on the next one. I was thinking eight comics, but owner wants to start some. Ah, uh, I see. This guy, Trevor Trout. I didn't mean to say his name, whatever. Fuck it, said it. Um, He was booking a show and, you know, I had hit him up and then, you know, fucking, he's like, yeah, I'll get right back to you. And then the next day, it's like, Four comments, like, what the fuck, bro? He's like, oh, I thought it was supposed to be eight, but he wants four. All right, one of those comics barely fucking started, dude. You could have had me on before them. Fucking all good, whatever, you know? But I don't know, you know? I don't think it's bad to necessarily, like, for your mind to go to conspiracies consp uh, right away. But if there's reasonable doubt in any of those conspiracies, why hold on to it? You know what I mean? I think sometimes people believe in conspiracies just for the sake of, you know, I don't trust anything, so I'm just going to believe it because I don't trust anything. That's fucking bullshit, dude. You know what I mean? There, there are some things that are just like, I guess, truth or just objectively true, you know? I think the one thing that always fucks with me is if is if the world is flat, right? And it's really hard. Uh, actually, you know what I recently found out? I forgot who I was talking to, but they told me that one of their friends is a, is a Freemason. And, you know, Freemasons are involved with the Illuminati and all that. And these Illuminati Freemason people believe the earth is flat, Dude, does anybody remember the Illuminati from early 2000s? We all thought these dudes were running the world, fucking tricking us, and just like, you know, puppeting the whole world, right? They were all-knowing to some degree. They're probably like, I thought back in, they're considered maybe the most powerful or dangerous group back then. Remember Jay-Z was calling them out, doing the all-seeing eye and all that? And now, bro, you're telling me you guys believe in the flat earth? You, that took it down a whole fucking tier. Maybe like 10 tiers. Right? 
now I'm putting the LGBTQ community above you guys. You guys are not shit, dude. The, I mean, LGBTQ com, uh, community, dude, they're fucking climbing up in the ranks, okay? Skull and Bones, you guys are basically LGBTQ, but nobody likes you because you're from Harvard. You're rich fucks. You know, you guys are fucking each other with owl blood or something. I don't know. I have no idea, man. But I mean, look, like I said, I'm I'm not entirely too sure if YouTube was finding the content of this or that particular video like, oh, we got to keep it down. Because like any other video that I would see um, that would talk about the Lahaina fires, you know, I mean, if they're news based, it was like 300,000, 400,000. So <sighs> I could be tripping, you know, I could always be tripping. You know, but also, you know what, guys, have a little bit of conspiracy in your mind. But if there is reasonable doubt, question it, bro. Don't fucking don't just go down the rabbit hole of conspiracy. You will fall forever. There is no it's a bottomless pit. The conspiracy rabbit hole is a bottomless pit. dude. You will be falling forever and there would be no, there's not going to be anything to grasp on except for Nazis are living on the moon or something. I I don't know, you know, it's I, what do you grasp on, you know? There's there's lizard people. Democrats are eating babies. Uh what's a Republican one? I don't know. Or what's just another, I don't know, conspiracy? Fuck it, dude. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? Um, but I don't know. You guys be the judge if I was conspiracized against or not. Um, you know, uh, fucking, um, I guess this is along the lines of conspiracy. Not sure. But there are, I guess, alien mummies in Mexico. Um, very odd thing. You know, it's super odd because I read like two, three articles. And what they're basically what they're saying is this one dude, I, for, I don't remember, Musan or whatever his name is. He's uh, some kind of specialist when it comes to this kind of research. He's the one that found them, whatever. They're these little mummified, they look like they're three feet tall, two feet tall, mummified aliens. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And the articles that I read, all of them say they've been tested. And they say that they're not human, but they might not even be alien either. Um, I think some tests have shown that they're um they're human mixed with animal like uh no not like animals and humans have been fucking not some fucking little bastard animal human child maybe they, and i guess they're known to be like a thousand years old i don't know the exact purpose as to why humans a thousand years ago would do this basically um these little beings are a collection of human body parts, animal body parts, and like different other stuff to make the skin and all that. The purpose of this, no clue. Who knows? It could have been some kind of um, like a, a funeral kind of ritualistic thing or, um, you know, you know, those people who do, do those like shrunken heads. I don't know. Humans are weirdos. You know, it could be for any fucking goddamn thing. What if they were just like supposed to be uh, like a, a life-size life size do uh, Barbie doll back then, right? You know, those like three foot, four foot Barbie dolls that, you know, we could buy them. Maybe that's what it was back then. Like, you know, we're not that good at making an actual human. So here's this thing, you know, and the kids could dress it up brush its hair, have tea with it, you know. I don't know, but they're they're just in the museum and 
it's happening all around the time where like uh, those dudes were like uh, going to Congress and wanting Congress to, I guess, admit or create something for the Air Force to where dudes are not being silenced about seeing UFOs. I think they're calling calling them UAPs now, unidentified aerial. I don't know. But let me see. I want to look up what UAP is. Because a UFO could actually mean anything. I think it... Let me see. UAP? Alien. What is a UAP? Huh. Let me see. What is a UAP? Unidentified flight. That's UFO. Oh, it's. So it's. UFO is an unidentified flying object, and then UAP is unidentified. An anomalous phenomenon? is perceived aerial phenomena that cannot be immediately identified or explained. Most UFOs are identified as known objects or atmospheric phenomena, while a small number remain unexplained. Okay. So, yeah, UFOs, uh, most of the time, <laughs> why is it unidentified? It's like, upon investigation, most UFOs are identified. So why not just call it an IFO? Those are identified flying objects. It's hilarious. I don't know. I, when it comes down to this alien stuff, I have no idea. Part of me believes that, like, you know, of course there's other galaxies, other un universes. Sorry. Ugh. Boring myself, I guess. Um, And how could you say obviously, right? I mean, scientists say it you know i don't know fuck it whatever dude maybe joe rogan knows i don't know but i do think that there is life out there but i don't think there's any life that has ventured into moving light speed you know i i i don't believe it i i feel like I just feel like we would have seen something a long, long time ago. Light speed? You know what I mean? Like, dude. Nobody can fuck with light speed. You know what? Like, imagine a big at the size of a fucking a ship. Like a, a cruise ship or whatever. Traveling light speed through space. <laughs> it's insane you know it's how could something so heavy go that fast and not burn up at the same time like you know when when like fragments from space like or even a let's just say a, a um a satellite when it when it falls out of the atmosphere onto you know into the earth's atmosphere it it burns up the rate at which it's falling from there and from from the sky and coming down to the earth it's burning up i just don't see it happening you know i i feel like even if there is aliens out there in another world they're still doing doggy style you know what i mean they're still just doing 69 they're shitting in floors or, you know, they're digging holes and shitting in the floor. Yeah, maybe they got some rocket ships. We have rocket ships. 
you know, at best, I'll say some societies, probably not ours, already has flying cars. Oh, then if they got flying cars, why wouldn't they have light speed? Then why wouldn't they be fucking traveling the goddamn universe at light speed? Right? You would think that some kind of extraterrestrial life form out there that has already conquered light speed, you don't think they would even pay us a tiny visit? Bro, if somebody's traveling light speed, they are taking over our world. I'm sorry. If they're tra traveling light speed, they're taking over our, our world. We have no technology that can compete with that. Imagine the fucking weapons they have, bro. I can't even imagine what somebody, what kind of weaponry somebody would have if they can travel through space and time. I, no, I don't know about in time, but right? If aliens like that came down, I would surrender. I'd be like, bro, put a probe in my ass. I'm done. Like, turn me into an alien. I don't give a fuck. Brand me. I'm not going out. And you guys aren't going to eat me you know, or whatever the fuck you're going to do. I'm going to be an alien. Fuck it, dude. Give me tentacles. Give me fucking a beak for a mouth. I don't fucking know, you know. Turn me into one of those little Mexican aliens. I don't care. I'm not going to be a human in a world where there's light speed and aliens have top-notch technology. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. Give me a cy cyborg arm. And I'll marry a fucking octopus for a wife. I don't fucking know, you know? I don't know. The weird thing about those articles is like about the Mexican aliens. <laughs> Such a funny thing. Um, imagine the those little aliens crossing the border. They escaped the museum and to get freedom, right? They escaped Mexico and then came over here. And then now people are like, these illegal aliens are taking our jobs. There's like these little three foot mummified aliens washing dishes at a Japanese restaurant. People just call them Jose and fucking Marcos or whatever. Any fucking Mexican. They still have Mexican ass names. I don't know. The, the weird thing about those articles is that even though some scientists have tested it and been like, oh, yeah, no, the, this is perfectly explanation. There's a perfect ex explanation for this. Uh, you know, thousands of years ago, humans, um, they used to do weird stuff where they put, you know, human parts with animal parts and blah, blah. And, you know, they just made this little figure. But then there's other people who are like, well, you know, uh, we tested it and it's not human you know, and we're not sure where it, where its origin is from. So therefore, you know, and the articles end by saying like, and we'll see, we still don't know. It's like, how do you not, you already tested it. I think people just need to like, chill out. Let, let the, let the crazy ones be paranoid about the aliens, but just wait till it happens. You know what I mean? If, like, this alien thing is going to turn into the new Armageddon, right? People are going to stop believing in Armageddon because it's going to be like, all right, this is not happening, right? We've been saying this for, like, I don't know how many years Armageddon is not coming. But then the new fear is going to be, like, an alien invasion. Little things of aliens are coming out, and we're going to start praying to aliens, and... Uh, I could already see it, man. I could already see it, dude. I don't know, bro. Uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully those Mexican aliens find nice homes and family over on that side. You know? Or maybe they come to America and fucking send, you know, make money over here and send it back to their family. I don't know. I don't know. All right, everybody. That's the fucking episode today. I got to... I got to start getting dressed for work, but, um, you know, just, just a reminder tomorrow night, please come to the show. 
I want a really great show. You know, I, I love it when there's a good audience for the comedians to just feel like they want to just annihilate and do well, you know. So if you guys can make it, that'd be great. I'm going to put the ticket link in the description. You know, I'm also going to I also have my IG last resort comedy IG on there. If you guys have any questions. Hit those up. See what you can find out. You can also always DM me. No biggie. No problem. Um, and as always, look, if you want to help out the homie, I got my Venmo in there. Any little bit counts. You know, it feeds me. It keeps me going for for comedy and, you know, to keep on providing content for you guys. So um, love you guys. Thank you for always listening. Have a good weekend. Peace.